Hey, what's up, Ron here? Sorry for the one minute delay. We're getting started. Thank you so much to anyone who's here. Let me know in the chat what's up, who you are, where you're from, and we'll get it going. Today's gonna be a fun live stream. Uh, I'm gonna do a painting process with you and you're gonna learn how to paint a landscape that is maybe a bit on the more realistic side, uh, trying to match the colors and the values properly. I'm gonna mute for one second, hold on. There we go, Mike. Better when it's a little far away. Hey, Diane, how are you doing? Hi from Ottawa. I've always wanted to paint hay bales. We have so many farms here. Happy to join you. That, that's amazing. So you should um, you should make use of this and actually go and paint them plein air. That'll be amazing. Uh, we have them too around here, around highways and stuff. A little hard to get to though. Um, so yeah, and one thing I will say, and thank you to the 14 people who are already here. I did start one hour early in my time because we moved the clock, you know, winter clock now. Um, and so it's it may be uh, a different time for Europeans. I'm not sure. I know the U.S. still haven't moved their time. So just stay consistent with the 9 a.m. Eastern time. I moved it one hour uh, earlier, which is actually good for me because it's going to get dark real early anyway. And then you're not going to be able to see me. I just wanted to say again, thank you for the 16 people now that are here. If you can drop Drop a like on this video. Hey, Lisa, I see you. Thank you so much for being here from Toronto. You do want to stay till the end because, and let me show you. I'll do that, uh, but I will say the painting that uh, I created uh, is going to be uh, given away to one of you, so stay tuned until the end uh, to check it out, even if you're watching this after the live ends, which is of course not now because we're live now, but if you are, um, you can still join. Okay, so no worries about that. Uh, I do want to do a fun little giveaway to give away the painting that's as a result of this uh, process. So thank you so, so much. Um, I just to mention, this is a pre-recorded process. I still am working my setup here. So I'm pre-recording the process and then we're doing the narration together and we can pause and you can ask me a bunch of questions. Uh, hey, Lisa Janet uh, Wheaton, uh, thank you too for being here. Different from the previous uh, Lisa that I mentioned. Jennifer, how are you doing? Josephine, good morning from Niagara. Woke up just in time. Awesome. Pierre Haley running all its midnight here. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it's not going to run for too long. So I th the process itself is around 25 minutes. So it's not super long. Um, but you know, you know how it goes with the talking and everything. Worst case, you can watch it after the fact. Uh, hey, Louise, is it just me or are you muted? Um, no, I think it's just you. Uh, so make sure to crank up the volume if it's low. Uh, hey, Team FT, how are you doing? Uh, Colleen, hello, it's 8 a.m. here in Oxford, Mississippi. Cool. Uh, hey, Cindy from Oklahoma. Hey, Kay from California. Louise says, oh, now it's okay. Hi from Philippines, it's 9 p.m. here. Yeah, I know, so it's a little late in the Philippines. Sorry about that. Uh, Robin, good morning. How considerate to start earlier for us in the U.S.? Yeah, I try to just maintain the same time to prevent any confusion. Uh, and it works well for me too, you know, because then it's still light. Because once it's getting dark, I'll have to turn on the light and then I'm going to be all yellow. I really dislike that. Uh, hey, Maria, good morning from Illinois. Laura, how are you doing? Good morning from California. Sharif is here. Hi from Queens, New York. Um, uh Nicole, <laughs> hello from Panama. Kimberly, uh, I love the giant jelly rolls in the field. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's always a fun subject to paint. Uh, Jennifer says, glad I woke up in time. It's around 9 a.m. in Ohio. Okay, so good. So I think we can get started. We have 50 people in the house. I think that's a good number. Uh, so let me share with you again the problem. Yeah, no, you were right. I'm muted. Let me fix that. Let me fix it. One second.
Okay, you should be able to hear me now. I don't know why I forgot to bring the mic into this setup, but in any case, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, uh, what is... Okay, show, 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 show. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, now fixed. So basically, uh, let me... I'm going to mute for a second. So on the one hand, when the mic is close, I see it's peaking. But then on the other hand... When I go get farther from it, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, it looks like it's peaking, but hopefully the, the volume is okay. Let me actually test it out now for a second. I'm listening to myself for a second just to make sure. I'm going to hear if it's peaking. Okay, no, it looks good. It looks good. I don't know. Uh, so in any case, yeah, now we're good. Uh, let's see here. No sound. Tons of no sound. Yeah. So I'm going to let the process run. If you have any questions, you stop me and I'll stop that. But here's something really fun. So I'm actually flipping it upside down to get my circles accurate because with all the experience and everything, my circles are still not fully accurate. And sometimes I need to flip them to see the mistake. So I hope that makes sense. Um, ooh, a lot of people here. Thank you so much. Much, much appreciated. Um, to anyone who just joined, just letting you know, you want to watch till the end, even if you're watching after the live stream ended, because there's going to be a giveaway of this very painting. So that'll be fun and you can win it. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, do a raffle random out of all the comments at the end of this one. So you'll see. Um, hey, Richard, how are you doing? Hey, David, uh, from the South Coast, England. Michelle Smith, hey, from Texas. Hey, Mark. Uh, hey, Micro Logos from Belgium. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Gaurav. Uh, I'm doing really well, my big brother. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, simply Steph Yellow from the Philippines. Hey, David. Uh, hey, not David. Hey, Richard. Sorry, I read your message. Um, da -da -da. Good, good, good. Okay, now it's fixed. Uh, Luis says, I'm watching this uh, while I'm finishing my tasks and backlog from school. It's good to hear someone talking. It's quite quiet and lonely in my study. Yeah, I figure. I hope happy I can help that way. Uh, so basically, I established the sketch of the and I'm going to skip all the sorry, all the muted uh, messages Ruth said on the mute button yet. Uh, so here we go. We have the reference photo. Um, and the main so here's just a general note about drawing because that, that's just something that generally people tend to struggle with sometimes. Um, one thing you want to pay attention to is how you um, divide your efforts. And that's that actually applies to everything. So to me, if there's some Something that I know is the focal point, I'm going to devote much more time to that, as you've seen me do here with the hay bales. And actually, let me um, pause this just for, for a second. So you saw me working on the hay bales, and I'm really um, uh, taking my time to set them up, not only their shape to make sure the circle is accurate, but also their distances. Because one thing I really liked about the composition here is that their distances are uneven, which leads to a lot of interest, right? So I start with the focal point in mind because that's when I'm going to devote the most of my attention. Thank you, Naxon, for being a new subscriber. Much appreciated. And hey, Pamela from Zimbabwe. Hey, Karin. Hey, Vagabond. Thank you so much. Hey, Caitlin. Yeah, it's been a while since we did a fun little painting process here live. So it's a it's a good opportunity. Um, so yeah, so devoting most of your the most awake and effective time you have out of the entire painting process to the focal point. And only then now you see me well, working my way towards the back, right? So now I'm starting to establish the background. Because honestly, mistakes are going to be less noticeable in the background. Um, the information there could be a little looser, right? So that's that's when I, after I've established the main thing, I move on to the back. Uh, and that's how it works, you know? Um, so in the meantime, as this process runs, let me know if you have any specific trouble recently with watercolor or something that's on your mind. Because uh, I'll be addressing a lot of also beginner stuff as much as possible. And it's cool people finding friends in the chat. Um, so yeah, so we have a few layers there in the background of the trees and a bit of a more bluish layer even behind it, as you can see, um, where you'll see some, uh, you know, um, houses and buildings and stuff like that. So that's going to be quite gray and in the background. And what I'm planning to do is work my way from the back to the front, slowly moving from the gray to a green and to a yellow to all of the fields. Now, I did make a few mistakes in this painting process, and you will see as we'll get to them. Nothing too terrible, but 
in terms of matching the values and the and the colors, I actually did a decent job. So I think you'll enjoy that part for sure. Um, so you see now. I'm breaking away from the hay bales and I'm, 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 I've established some of the trees that are a little closer because that's where I do want to pay attention to the values especially. So the trees that are immediately to the side of that main hay bale, I really want to show, right? Um, and I kept most of the mixing in this process just because I want to show you some of that. Um, hey, Karin uh, from Florida. Cool. And hey, Nancy, really like this reference photo. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's just made to be painted. So I'm starting top to bottom, very loose. Now, let me just give you a bit of a um, clue as to the colors I'm using because everyone's um, always curious and Nax and happy that my shorts are helpful. Did you find me via my shorts? By the way, I'm curious to hear because I've been posting a lot of them. I think I posted one of my best shorts ever uh, in, uh, I think it was yesterday. Um, so yeah, colors. French ultramarine, quinacridone rose, lemon yellow, and then a bit of uh, lemon uh, yellow ochre. And yeah, that's my usual typical palette I use most frequently rec in recent uh, days, I guess. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's very typical of what I do. Um, and as for just general materials, the paper is a Saunders Waterford, it's 300 grams. Uh, you will see me using a, a bunch of brushes, but the main one that carries this process is, of course, this Skoda Barocco that's one that's good for everything, small details, large areas, and so on. Now look at what's gonna happen here. So I'm moving from blue in the sky onto the yellow for the fields, right? Now you'll notice that the fields that are far are a little um, more gray. It's a subtle change, right? But you can see it's a little more gray. And as we move closer, it starts to get really yellow. And I'm actually completely ignoring that layer of trees. So you see all the trees there? I'm, I'm painting over everything. I'm just painting a yellow. So it's almost like painting the ground. And then I know that I can paint the trees above that. Okay, it's really important uh, to pick your battles, right? And with watercolor, and let me turn on the fan one second. But just as I was saying, with, uh, with watercolor, you need to learn to pick your battles. Do I want to struggle with the first wash and spend a ton of time trying to get the foliage in, in a green, and try and, and get it not to move too much into the uh, yellow areas and have a big mess wet and wet? No, I'm not looking for that. So pick your battles, do the foliage and the next wash, right? That's, that's a decision I made. Thank you, Tony. I'm happy that you enjoy the shorts as well. Uh, Cindy, I like I love pics of hay bales and can't ever get them right. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, it's just in the nuances of values and color. That's pretty much it. And it's what I'm trying to do here. So notice how I'm introducing a bit more red onto the foreground. That kind of a thing helps to create a sense of depth. And you, you can tell that there is this bit of an orange towards the bottom uh, of the, the fields and of that area. Here's actually where I made a slight mistake later on. I went a little too too, um, too red on that lower section. It should have been a little more orange, but we're talking really small nuances, things that, that you, you wouldn't even notice necessarily. Now look at what happened here. So I have to pause and, and tell you a story. So look at this. Can you see? I'm gonna use the water sprayer in just one second and boom. That's not what a water spray is supposed to look like. So let me show you because it's it's hilarious. So I have this water sprayer. I have tons of them. Thank you, John, for sending me uh, a few of these. And this part in the middle, right? There's this part here in the middle. Guess what? It pops out. So every time you squeeze this, it pops out a little more. And what happened this time, I squeezed it. It flew away. It actually hit my printer, fell on the ground, and this entire thing was open, so I didn't get an actual spray effect. I got like big drops flying over on the paper. And this shows you accidents happen and you have to learn how to work with them. And that's perfectly okay. So at this stage, I was so happy with the sky, by the way. I was like, no clouds. I don't need any clouds. I like, I like that the sky is smooth. And then I get this. So look at what I'm doing. I'm doing some, um, some um, disaster management. I'm, I'm moving it to the left. To, I'm, I'm raising the board so that things flow a little to the right. And then I cleaned a bit of the excess water. And then immediately, I pull out the hairdryer and I cut this part, of course, but immediately I pull out the hairdryer and I dried it. Because the, the longer I allow it to spread out, the bigger these stains are going to be. So you look at this and you're like, ah, oh, 
disaster. But it doesn't mean anything, right? In the in the grand scheme of things, no one will notice it. It actually looks quite graceful and nice in the sky. I think it's here. So I have the finished painting here. Do you want to see a, a snippet? There it is. I think it looks really nice, but we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, let me see what you're saying in the chat and then we'll continue with the process. Um, so, um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Richard, thank you for the group, the blessings to everyone. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a great day as well. Um, Luis Heileron, are there some interesting compositional points with this particular reference? Yes, there are. So a couple of things. First off, some a mistake that's very easy to make, I'll show you on the final one, is to get this hay bale to be too low. But it's very important for it to intersect the trees and go above the, the fake horizon line, right? Here, the, the end of the field, right? Now, another important thing is the distance, right? So this is a small distance, this is a big distance. Um, it's, it's a lot of interesting elements. You want to pay attention to the shape of the yellow field here in the background. You want to pay attention to this part that's a little more muted because it's more in the background. So composition will always play a very important role. And for almost any scene you paint, there will be some element that you really want to pay attention to and make sure it works in that scene. And different scenes will pose different challenges, compositionally speaking. This one in particular, the reason I like it so much is it, it it's ready to go right out the gate. You don't need to change too much. It's it's perfect. Like I really like the person who took this photo did a perfect job, in my opinion. Um, so that's great. That would be, I guess, the most interesting ones. Uh, Cindy, I love pics of Hable. Oh, yeah, we read that. We read that. Uh, Froze, love your style. Bravo, thank you so much. Uh, Naksan, I, I subbed from your monotone watercolor tutorial. I'm a graphite pencil artist and just started to work with watercolor. Oh, that's cool. I think, I don't know if that's the video that got a lot of uh, people disliking it as well. But yeah, it was a fun one. Vagabond, yep, yep. It happened to me as well recently. Yeah, I had no idea these things can fly out, you know. Um... So yeah, let's continue on. <laughs> Pierre, I, I'll check that out later. It sounds interesting. So now I'm starting to mix that um, green and gray for the background. So my plan, because it's easier for me to work left from right, is actually to start working on the trees here. As you see right, right here, right? The green first and make my way towards the gray on the other side. So the way I'm mixing it is like I always mix any green. I'm just using my French ultramarine, that's the blue my lemon yellow, and then I add just a bit of red to it because you get a very, in a way, artificial green if you just use yellow and blue. Most greens are more nuanced than that, especially when they're this far away from you. So you want to capture that bit of mutedness, mutednessness in, in that. So uh, this is why I do it, but don't go overboard. It's still green. It's still trees. And you're going to see in the um, uh, Saturday's video is going to be fantastic. It's going to give you a sneak peek. It's going to be this process. And it's honestly one of my best, I think, uh, videos uh, in recent times. Probably going to get 2,000 views only because usually when I put a lot of effort into videos, they don't get a lot of views and, and vice versa. I don't know why. Um, <coughs> but it it's going to talk a lot about the, those nuances of greens and oranges and and um violets so yeah so here we go with this now a great palette to produce this kind of a painting would be a velasquez palette by the way because we don't really need a strong red anywhere here so you could use french ultramarine yellow ochre and uh, burnt sienna it would work perfectly this is why there's these the spout is so good for these types of scenes right um onak you followed the tutorial to do value studies awesome yeah that's a good one i think very important way to practice. Now I'm mixing a lighter and bluer color to put behind those trees and I'm actually merging it together. So what's going to happen is it's going to be a part of um, one single wash, quote unquote. Let me move the mic a bit, just one second. There, there we go. So um, these washes are essentially going to be connected and usually I cut out all of this mixing. Look at how much of the of the mixing is just left there uh, and how long it takes sometimes. That, that's normal for me. I'll take several minutes to mix a paint. Um, you need that time and many times tutorials um, mislead you to think that there is, isn't a lot of mixing involved where it actually is a big part of it. Comes when how are you doing? Yeah, the green seems dark, but once it dries, trust me, it's going to be just the right value. I actually have some value comparisons near the end. 
Uh, PRB, can you get a green out of the Velasquez Valley? Yes, you can. Yellow Ochre and French Ultramarine create beautiful greens. Um, actually, really nice, natural-looking greens. Now, this shape goes into the field, right? There are trees more at the front, and it's actually a very important bit there. I need to figure out how I can point, like, with a laser anywhere on the screen. I'll figure it out, but for now, look at how the background blue merges with the foliage, right? And then it, it there's another big tree or a group of trees closer to us with that tip at the end there, and that's more to the front. It's still a part of that background wash. It is still a part of that background wash. Because one of the main lessons you learn is the more you can simplify, especially in this background part, the more clear the impression becomes to the viewer, especially around the foreground, right? And it's almost like, and you don't have to simplify if you can get the nuances just right and get every detail, that's cool. But the thing is, it's almost like, and I'm, I'm using this analogy in that pumpkin video as well. It's almost like telling a good story. You can talk about every single thing in the world and in, on the character's side and the story and the plot, but usually most information is redundant. By removing that redundant information, you can tell a much better story. Same goes with this. Very often I find that to be the case. Um, so yeah, let's look at a bit of what you're saying and then we'll continue. Um, let's see here. David, I love the pumpkins. Saw them on Instagram. Thank you. Uh, Pierre, can you get a green? Yes, we talked about that. Naxan, do you use synthetic or natural brushes? I actually use both. Ideally, I'd prefer just using synthetic just because, I don't, I don't know, animal hair, that sucks. <laughs> but I do, have, I do have admittedly a few natural hair brushes too. M now, what I like most is actually a little um, more springy than the natural. So if it's just a squirrel or something natural, uh, I find them to be too soft sometimes. So I actually prefer synthetic, but I want the more s the softer synthetic, right? Um, not the really springy ones. Uh, sometimes they're good, but for the most part, um, I'm I'm somewhere in the middle, but more towards the synthetic in terms of the feel that I enjoy. So if I'm not mistaken, the brush I'm using here, this Barocco, I don't remember if it's fully synthetic or if it's kind of a mix of synthetic and hair, natural hair. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to check that out. Uh, I like somewhere in the middle. I think you can do everything with just synthetic brushes if they're high quality. You don't need to use hair. Um, so yeah, Richard, paints gray and Indian yellow is my favorite green at the moment. Cool. Yeah, it's. I like how everyone develops kind of their own favorite green and it just works, you know? The colors you enjoy using are more fun uh, and they, it encourages you. Like, I, I love a bunch of color combinations and it actually encourages me. Just the thought of painting them encourages me to paint, right? Uh, so I'm gonna establish some of the trees and bushes in the background there. Um, let's see here. Hey John, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Cubs, crazy question. But what is the difference in ultramarine blue and French ultramarine? So TO has a great video on that. So if you just search T-O-T-E-O-H, French ultramarine versus ultramarine, um, ultramarine blue. He'll explain it. I have no idea. <laughs> I never can tell these things. Uh, it's the same pigment. It's PB29. So the pigment itself is the same. If I'm not mistaken, the composition within it is different, but I'm not sure. And maybe one of them granulates, the other doesn't. As you can understand by the way I talk, I don't really care about these things, but there is a difference. So you should you should probably look into that. Uh, I'm just lazy. Uh, Chim uh, any advice on where to find good reference photos? So I usually go on Pixabay. Now either I'll have a concept in mind um, and look at this nice little painting around a hay bale, right? Um, and I like to use my entire brush when I do that. I, I really put it close to, and I press it against the paper so that it expands and then I get it around the shape. Uh, it's a faster way of doing it. I actually have a video on that technique too. Um, so I like Pixabay. I just go there. I'll either have an idea of what I want to paint or I'll just browse the home the homepage and see what's new. So it's Pix, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. It's a great 
Uh, a place to start. Um, just a reminder, thank you so much to anyone who's here, 82 viewers. Really appreciate it. If you can take a moment, like this live stream, it really helps it reach more people. And there will be a giveaway in the end, so you want to stay tuned uh, to know how to participate. Um, let's see. Uh, Pexels is good too, Richard. Uh, thank you for that. I sometimes use Pexel. Pexels is good for video, by the way. Uh, David, looking out of my window and my garden is full of thousands of different greens. Yep, yep, that's how it works. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is how I approach. Now, another place for reference photos is yourself. I like the pictures I take myself are the ones I enjoy the most to paint, quite honestly. Uh, there's nothing better than taking your own photos of your own favorite subjects. To me, like almost all the car paintings in the car book is pictures I took or pictures that someone sent me in particular. Here I am doing wet and wet, very thick paint. Do you see how thick the paint is on the palette? So I have to pause, this is an important point. When you're mixing very dark paint, it needs to almost not move on the palette. You need to really, really mix dark, especially for doing wet and wet like this, okay? So it's a bit of a challenging technique to mix an all, and nearly, and that's actually a good topic for a video, so I'm gonna write it down this instant, um, near dry uh, dark color mix, good idea, um, because it's just something that's a little challenging. Like I remember because it doesn't move much on the palette, so it's it's near dry, um, but you need to mix quite a bit of it and quite strong for it to show this well, uh, wet and wet. Um, even just to show this well on paper, honestly. Uh, but yeah, and then I'm gonna continue with that wash to the right and keep it a little more, uh, a little brighter green as you can see there. Um, so yeah, your own photos, wet canvas forum for painting has great a great reference photo library so i highly recommend you check that out let me fix this for a moment here we'll go like this and you can see my roll my arch paper uh roll so that's fun uh so yeah um uh thank you looking up thank you for being here hey michelle thank you so much good morning to you too pam according to john from daniel smith french ultramarine and ultramarine blue have different pigment size oh yeah that's right one is ground smaller and because of that the light reflects slightly differently yeah so in the very simple sense if i'm not mistaken larger pigments actually have a harder time being absorbed so they stay on top of the papers um you know, network of fibers, if I'm not mistaken, and the smaller ones sink more. Um, so yeah, that's a great, great uh, explanation, at least for some of it, right? Uh, she spins, hi, hi, long time no see, work sucks, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I remember, I think you were in the last live stream, if if I'm not mistaken, right? Or, the, or the, at least the one before that. So I wanna pause this for a second to show you something really cool. So when you look at this entire strip of green, the left side, the, and I'm gonna show you the left side here is a little more muted. And notice how as we move to the right, where my brush is currently at, it becomes a little cleaner, which means I'm using gradually less and less of the red. So a pure green, as pure as possible with my palette will be blue and yellow. And then I add to that red to neutralize. Now, the more I move to the right, the less and less red I use, which leads to a cleaner green. Now, why am I elaborating on that because an important part of to me making a painting that looks really cool is that combination if you can nail a bit of the nuance of a the same color but just a little more neutral a little stronger saturation get both it can lead to a very interesting impression and i absolutely love this transition now there's another aspect that goes into that and that is where do you place these colors the better you become, the better your plan for the painting gets of like, okay, so this needs to be in a place that's closer to me as the viewer. So for example, I should have reversed these because the left side is ever so slightly closer to us because we're looking at it for a little from, from a left angle. So I would actually reverse these now looking back at it, put that pure green on the left. However, it does, uh, I think, play a nice role in terms of physical location compared to the hay bales. So it's still good. It's still really, really nice and I think a nice impression. Uh, let me drink a bit of water. Man, I'm talking like crazy today. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, 
to, to MFT, it's hard to find nice shadows in Pixabay photos. Yes, you need to uh, pick your references carefully, but th they're there. There are very good reference photos there. I find a lot of them there. Um, I wish there would be a specific resource for watercolor painting. Wet canvas is really good, but yeah, and I, I talked about creating this kind of a thing um, about a year ago, and then I got super busy and haven't gotten to it. It's still like a plan that's written for me to do, but it's gonna take a while. Um, Cubs of Wind, do you prefer wet and wet? Wet on, on back or dry paper? I'm not sure what wet on back means, but um, I will use either, depending on the situation. And definitely, Antigono, maybe you should start one. Uh, I would use either, depending on the situation. So to me, the first wash worked really well wet on dry. Because I really... It's clear layers from top to bottom. Sometimes you'll do it the other way around. Uh, sometimes there is a dark, unified background, and I'll still do wet on dry. Because I feel like it brings the color better. I feel like it's less water on paper to compete with, so the paint is really fresh. Um, it really will depend on the use. Uh, and I have a few videos on the topic, like wet and wet versus wet and dry. Hey, Muffle Beauty, let me continue this. Uh, this can run uh, from uh, Ingolstadt, Bavaria, Germany. That's cool. That sounds like a beautiful place with beautiful views, too. Uh, and there we go. More wet and wet. Naksak um, Sun, I saw the short... Uh, where you said you don't clean your palette to get more uh, natural muted colors. But what about the colors? What if a darker color ruins a lighter one? You mean in the palette? Um, I find that I just add a bit of water, dig through the well, and it's clean again. Um, I don't mind doing that work. And I just bring it back into the main area. And yeah, Antigona, I got it that you meant to a reference library. Patio 87. Uh, seems such unnecessary difference between two hues. Um, the French Ultramarine, you mean? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it's just such a popular one, so maybe they thought to give you the option. By the way, saw my test paper over there. Always, always testing things out on paper before I do it in the final painting. What I was looking for is a very neutral um, orange. So, so almost a brown. The hay bales are pretty much a dark orange very muted though so it's not like a bright orange and it took me a long time to mix that as you've seen uh hey ryan or rian uh good day currently doing my plate while watching this uh i always love your palette by the way thank you so much um what's doing the plate let me know uh are you painting over a plate cindy french ultramarine is a little warmer redder yeah but that's i can't tell the difference honestly so look at this color I'm using here. It's very muted. Now it may look a little even too muted. I think once it dries, it'll actually make sense. Um, the way I saw it as I painted it, um, the way I'm looking at it actually right now, where is it here? Um, the way I'm looking at it right now, actually, it looks much more accurate. So maybe the camera skews a bit with the colors. Um, Pierre, how come you, you're painting the dark tones before the mid? I never follow these rules yeah i go from light to dark dark to light freely sometimes psychologically it's more comfortable to more more i guess fun even to paint a dark background set that up and then move on to the mid valleys i i usually don't follow this rule um but i do think having your own um personalized work process could be an advantageous thing so I'm not disregarding that. If you enjoy and you developed your own work process to work from light to dark, there is some value to that for sure. Um, one thing I do wonder is glazing. Should I have divided that into a flat yellow wash and then covered that with the more neutral wash? I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, hey CB, good morning from San Diego. Hey Phyllis, how are you doing? Lucky me, I just turned on my computer, cool. Uh, Richard, search direct sunlight and image. Yeah, sometimes I'll add the word sunny um, and it will help too. Now look at what I'm doing here. I'm negatively painting these uh, hay or grass blades um, and that really helps to create an impression, right? That I'm painting the shadow and by that I'm painting the light. Uh, that's a really fun thing to do and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other hay bales. Um, Lavender Debs, by the way, had so much fun with the autumn uh, vibe of the Velasquez palette uh, or vid of the Velasquez palette. 
uh, Debs in Montana, USA. Thank you so much. Happy you enjoyed that one. Uh, Diane, how are you doing? I now accept your dirty palette. It took me a while in some counseling. Yeah, yeah, and do your thing. If you prefer a clean palette, definitely go for that. That's just my thing. It's the, the easier way for me to do it, you know. Um, now, one thing, by the way, let's pause the video for a second. Look at this section here again, right? This section right now in the painting feels a little too blue because I continued with my sky a little lower, switched to orange or to this, you know, muted yellow. And the, a lot of the blue seeped in there. So you're going to see how I'm going to fix that in just a few moments. And it will look much, much better once I apply another glaze. Um, Alex, hello, Liron. Is durability perhaps another difference between the natural hairbrush and synthetic? Um, not in my experience. Not really. Uh, uh, both, I have had both that, that work well and last for very long, for almost the entire eight years uh, that I've been painting. So um, not from my own experience. Maybe if I stretch it over and it gets to two decades, maybe, maybe there will be a difference. Uh, in my experience, not really. Um, looking up, <laughs> Kimberly uh, Matsumoto, I'm always surprised by the dark colors, training my brain that the colors will dry lighter is hard. Yep, that's always throwing us off. Yeah. And even if you look now at the fields, the, just the ground, right, it's, it's a little too light, but it's also a little too red. It needs to be more yellow. And that's the fix that I attempt doing later. One more thing you want to pay attention to is how, and there's one mistake that I'm going to fix before I, I uh, this, if you win the giveaway, you get this painting. Uh, spoilers. So uh, I will add another cool thing to it. You see that the highlight goes all the way around the hair bell almost. That's something I will fix. Um, and by the way, I skipped the shadow on the side of the hair bells. We'll get that later on. You'll see. Um, so yeah. Hey John, how are you doing? Uh, hope everything is super well. Um, did you just get in, I think, to the live stream, right? Uh, so, uh, there will be a giveaway. Just letting everyone know if you join just now, there will be a giveaway of this very same painting, uh, and it will be quite easy to participate. Um, let's see, Rian, some architectural drawings, we call it plates. Oh, okay. I was actually introduced to watercolor when I entered architecture school and I loved it. Yeah, that's, that's a connection I often see, uh, people doing the architecture stuff. Um, and then they just use watercolor in, in the most simplest manner possible. And then they want to develop it. Phyllis, I'm extremely partial to my Princeton Neptunes and elites. Yeah, so the Princeton Neptunes are these synthetic. I like I like Princetons. Yeah, I had a good experience with them. They're not ruined. I just kind of grew out of them. They were a little too springy to me. The specific model um, that that I tried. Uh, Cubs, when do you like Michael Solovyev's brushes? I actually have this one that I still need to try. I haven't tried it yet, and I haven't tried his other brushes yet. So that's something I need to do. Uh, and so here I'm establishing very gently some of these uh, details on the ground, right? So it's like small grass blades and it's not grass. I don't know if it's hay, is the ground hay? And then they roll it into these rolls. Let me know, I think, it, I think that's how it works. Um, now, this is where sometimes it may end up being overwork. The way I do it though, uh, is quite gentle and it does follow a pattern. So you see how you can almost see a line of these, like lines of these going um, horizontally. I'm following that. And worst case, if you feel like you're overworking, you can spray a bit of water and it should help it spread out. Now, if your sprayer just had its cap fly away and it just sprays everything all over the, the painting, then maybe be careful with that. Um, but yeah, you see, just establishing patterns. Now, when you do this, just remember the farther these grass blades or hay blades get from you, the smaller they become. Perspective. Still at play here. So you want to make sure, keep them smaller. And that really helps with the sense of depth. Smaller, lighter sometimes, they'll be more muted, less saturated. Use all the means at your disposal to get them to look like a natural part of the scene right? Um, and you can take your time and use a thinner brush. Like I, I almost never use a really thin brush, but you could use a rigor brush for that. Um, I just like the directness of using a larger brush and just using the tip of it uh, very carefully. Uh, but yeah. Um, Cubs, when do you like? Oh, yeah, we read that patio. I love my prints to Neptune quills. Oh, yeah. Quills. So that means they're a soft hair, right? Um, 
So what I'm mixing right now, and then I'll, I'll look at some more of your comments. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's gonna be, yeah. So that's the moment, right? So here's where you wanna focus a bit. Notice how it turns. Right now it feels a little, almost like water. This, the background almost looks like water, but its shape doesn't make sense because it's at an angle. It's a hill, right? So you're like, what is that? What am I looking at? Look at what happens once I apply this thin wash. It really brings it into the scene. Sometimes when th something feels detached, I find in my experience, it's too light. So once you put a thin glaze over it, it brings it in. Uh, just something for you to know, if you look at the painting and some part feels like it's just empty, like a vacuum, um, that's sometimes what happens. And by the way, don't worry about if you're using good paper, you see there is some overlap. So when I apply the yellow, let me show you here. When I apply the yellow, it does go a bit above the blue to the right side and the green underneath. It, it overlaps, right? Because it's very hard to just paint all the way till the edge and stop. So just know if you're using good paper and it's fully dry and you're gentle, it should be okay. It should still work out and you won't uh, reawaken the wash underneath, right? Some people struggle with that and it's just the paper. Uh, if you're using pulp paper, even quality paper that's not cotton, you're gonna run into trouble. And it's not your fault, it's the paper's fault. I've been through this, I've been using cheap papers uh, a lot and in the past and it's just the paper. It's not your fault. Uh, so yeah, let's see what you're saying here again. Jackie, how are you doing? Hello, Liron, I'm glad I catch you live. Thank you for being here. Uh, David Harrison, when you finish painting for the day, do you treat your brushes with anything to maintain their points? I actually did it once or twice and I'm, I'm not built for that. It kind of bores me, um, so I don't. Uh, and I should, because uh, Escoda were super cool. They sent me their soap. Um, and a bunch of other things, and I just haven't gotten the chance to use it. I did try it out, their gel and soap. And yeah, I just, I guess I'm too lazy for that. Let me blow my nose for a second. <sighs> yeah, sorry about that. I just wanted to mute and not show you that. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't, but I think it's best practice. So um, if you have the energy and the willingness to do it, do it. It will help. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll regret it in a couple of years. Uh, Kabzuin, do you ever paint on blank paper without drawing first? Yes, I actually have a video here on YouTube of doing that. Um, I find it an interesting experience. Sometimes it brings out more of uh, your skills and more of it, it makes you actually treat this as a painting medium and not a coloring medium because some people just by mistake you know it's this tendency to treat watercolor as this coloring thing like a coloring book especially if your lines are very dark and you made this perfect sketch that you're scared to ruin and you end up painting inside the lines very light there isn't anything like a statement right? And, and you want sometimes your washes to make a statement, to, to go there and, and create a negative shape, to um, bring something into the scene like we've seen here with the background field that was way too blue and light, right? So the fewer pencil marks, sometimes it encourages people to, I would encourage you to look at this photo even and give it a try, paint it with no pencil lines and just try and see where it takes you. Because one thing you'll notice is you immediately focus more on the shapes. The work that I do when I have lines, sometimes you'll do it when you don't have lines because I'm so trained to try and look for shapes. Uh, and when you're getting started, especially, and I'm not saying you're getting started, but anyone new, any beginner, it's very hard to, you know, to not feel constrained by the lines and just say, okay, this is my area. I'm just going to fill it in. And you lose touch with the rest of the painting and how it all works together. So there's, there are some great benefits to, um, you know, painting directly. Great. Um, CB, I can't tell what colors you're mixing. Are you using certain colors? Yes, French ultramarine, lemon yellow, and uh, quinacridone rose with a bit of yellow ochre for some small sections. That's pretty much everything I'm using here. Uh, Plumpy Lump, what a time to join. Good noise, nose evacuation. Yeah, you joined just as I was blowing my nose. That's funny. Phyllis, spot on opinion, 100% cotton quality papers, perhaps. 
uh, the most important aspect of painting with watercolor. Yeah, it's definitely the one you feel the most change when you move into it. You're like, wow, it's actually easy to paint, right? It's so funny. Um, Naksan, I'm an architecture student. What watercolor brands do you recommend? Um, wow, that's a good question. I love tons of them. I, I like Daniel Smith. I love SAA. I like Schmenka. I like Shinhan PWC. Great uh, value. I like uh, St. Peter, Petersburg White Knights. Great value. I like Rose Ga Rosa Gallery. Really good paints. There's so many good brands out there. I think something maybe that you can find more easily in your area for a good price that's what you should probably go with. Uh, Donna, totally irrelevant. When my daughter was three years old, we passed a field of round hay bales and she said, oh, well, look at these cows all rolled up. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, sometimes kids have the funniest ways of looking at reality. These cows all rolled up. That's, that's so funny. That's so good. I have to use it sometime in my life. I don't know how. I'll find a way to use it. Uh, so now, remember I told you I'm going to darken this section, right? I'm going to darken uh, the entire ground because here's what it's missing. It's not missing in the value. The value is actually close to accurate. What it does miss is just a bit of being more yellow. Now, I made a mistake because the first wash was orange, right? So if you want to get it to be yellow, you don't cover it with more orange. You cover it with yellow. And I went a little too orange here, a little too much quinacridone rose in this wash. So notice what happens here. It becomes too reddish orange. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It, it did make it more saturated, which was another thing I was after. So I'm happy about that, right? So there was one very positive effect there. So you'll see me moving this from top to bottom. And as we get closer, it's a little stronger, but just ever so slightly. And one thing, I'm, you see, I'm spraying a little water. This is really important. So you block some part of the painting with your hand and then you spray. And I'm using, I fixed the sprayer. I put this part back in and I'm spraying only on the top part of this orange layer to make it a little bit lighter, just a touch. Uh, so that it looks a little more like depth. I'm not in this example, taking more paint and, and sometimes, you know, I'll go stronger on the bottom. I'm not doing that because it's strong enough already. I'm running the risk of going too dark, right? So instead of darkening the foreground, I'm lightening the background. And that's another way to play around with it. You know, solution, just problem solving. That's a big part of painting, problem solving. You always solve problems. Um, let's get rid of uh, girls for a uh, hide user. Yeah. The spam arrives at some point. <laughs> uh, Patricia, turning in late this morning. Good morning, everyone. I love fields with hay bales. I'll have to watch later. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I feel my nose is getting allergic. That's so strange. I don't know what it is. Um, uh, Matt, do you ever take a break from painting? If so, for how long? Yeah, all the time. I, I don't paint nearly as much time as I'd like to. Um, so I painted this like two days ago or three days ago that's three days with no painting so i think on average i'm painting twice a week three times a week something like that now for a longer time for a couple of hours but still that's n not nearly enough um and it depends on what i focus on at the time so if i put a lot of focus on creating content and videos i'll spend more time working on videos i do have to paint to create those videos of course but it's going to be like a little time painting and tons of time editing um if i'm working on a more serious project like the cars book, a new course, anything like that. I'll spend much more time editing, organizing, building web pages, building the curriculum, you know, narrating, recording my voice, um, marketing, all, like communicating, like replying to comments, stuff like that. Yeah, that happens a lot. Um, so yeah, in, in my best times, I'll paint like four times a week, easy, uh, for a long, a few long sessions, worse like once or twice. Um, so yeah, but in the, uh, let's say in the beginning and the first three years or so, I would paint every day for a couple of hours. And I may go back to a time where I do that. Honestly, I feel it coming. I feel like, okay, I want to push my skills to the next level. It's going to happen. Uh, for sure. I feel like in the ne next couple of months, um, 
Uh, Diane, I love your work and how you teach. When you paint from photos instead of life, is it because of the convenience or do you actually like painting from photos? Uh, convenience. I, I like painting from life more, but I don't have like a good area to set up still life or anything like that in the studio. Um, and being outside is a hassle. <laughs> you have to carry your stuff and paint outside with the elements. It's purely con uh, co um, convenience. Uh, it's more fun. It's definitely more fun to paint outside or from direct observation. The more fun brings out different stuff. Uh, Jackie, I hope you're set and happy in your new place. Yeah, definitely. Now I feel much in my place. Uh, a few small touches so that I can, you know, stream properly um, using my n normal camera uh, and uh, directly to YouTube. That a couple of small things that will help uh, improve it. But but for the most part, yeah, I the, the setup is working really well. Patricia, plus you have created contrast so the hay bales stand out more. Love it. Yep. The, yeah, definitely. So the light part of the hay bales. Yeah, completely forgot about that. Uh, Caitlin, Daniel Smith has a nice primary set with a warm and cold of each that is beautiful for these just starting up. Interesting. Yeah. Is it the, the normal primary set like the French Ultramarine, Hansa Yellow Medium? I think it is this one in peril in red, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, let's continue with the process and then we'll have plenty of time. We'll go over some, again, questions, um, anything you want to ask me, I'll, I'll be happy to. Uh, so now I'm going to start working on the shadows on the hair bell. So you notice from top to bottom, there's a very gentle transition from, sorry, you can see light to medium. So that's what I'm trying to achieve now. So I'm just pre-wetting a bit so that I get a gradual transition. I'm pre-wetting all three and then I'm gonna grab a bit of this paint and dip it in and get it to darken the lower sections. Very simple, straightforward way of doing it. You could first paint and then smoothen out. To me, it's easier to pre-wet in this example. Now I'm mixing a bit more of a neutral thing here, a bit more blue as you see, and I'm gonna darken the bottom ever so slightly. That's how you build it up. Um, Robin, my daughter recently told me statue and sculpture business. She taught Medusa lived nearby and all the statues were her victims. <laughs> ah, that the imagination. That's crazy. Yeah. Barbara, I'm definitely allergic to hay. I'm sure I'm allergic to hay. We just don't have a lot of it around here. I'm sure I'm allergic to it as well. Probably through the screen too. Uh, Naxon, what's your streaming routine? This time, every week, uh, Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time this time right now. Uh, so I'm adding details to the hay bale, hay fever for sure. Um, and just being careful. Don't want to go overboard here. The hay that's going to get the bale that's going to get the most attention is the one closest to us, obviously. Um, and the ones after that are going to be very gentle. So I'm following that circular line, but it's straight lines within that, right? Very thin. This isn't too dark. It's not that strong of a paint. I know it's going to dry lighter. All I'm looking for is to express just a tiny bit of texture. Now, again, looking back uh, at this, I'll probably add one or two stray. Uh, so you're, you'll get a, a better looking final version of this. Um, a, a few of these stray kind of pieces of straw coming out of the circle. It's going to make it look, I think, uh, really nice. And here we go. I'm signing this and I will show you some comparisons and we can go back and look at different parts of the video if you want to. One thing, again, I forgot and kind of messed up is the top here. This should continue being a highlight all the way to the right. So right here, there should still be a highlight and you can see it in the reference photo. Uh, so that's something I'm going to fix before I send it to whoever is going to win this. Uh, Cubs win. Oh, sorry, Patio. I spend more time to look at paintings and watching painting videos than painting myself, unfortunately. Yeah, that's not a good place to be in unless you, that's what you're after and that's perfectly fine. Um, I've, I, I have time like, times like this <laughs> where it's not the end of the world. You can always uh, change the balance, shift the balance in the future. So let's remove the tape, see the final result. Uh, Cubs win. When will the Cars book be available? Actually, Hopefully within two months or so, I'm going to miss Halloween, which sucks. I don't think I'll make it to Halloween, uh, Halloween, uh, Christmas. <laughs> um, I'll try. I'll try having it out by Halloween, uh, but we'll see. So here it is, the final result. Um, I will show you the scan. Here we go. So this is uh, the final scan of this. It's pretty much as accurate as it'll get, though it looks a little different in real life. Always looks better in real life. So let me leave that on the screen for a few seconds. Um, 
just again to go back to your question Cubs win um, I'm gonna work hard on it I started again working on it I have a few more to scan two more to paint and just arranging the book I'm gonna have to ask Amazon to ship me um, uh, proof copies just to see that it looks good because it's the first time I do a pure picture book so I need to see the quality of paper I chose like the best quality of paper best quality of printing and I need to see that it looks good this really eats into my um, uh, margins like how much money I'll make per copy but who cares it's, it's, uh, you know that's how it is with books it's gonna be a very um, low profit product but that's fine um, uh, Tim FT, I really admire your ability to make a business out of your beautiful water course. Thank you so much. Uh, and I owe it to you and everyone who's watching and, you know, joining the courses, buying the paintings. That's just, um, you're all my patrons. Even those who don't support me on Patreon, you're my patrons. Uh, let me let this run for a bit because we're going to see a comparison, if I'm not mistaken, with the reference photo in just a second. Some details up close. Donna, good to know that, uh, okay, then we'll check it out, okay, yes, here we go, comparison, so you can see the differences, of course, now, I do like more of my colors, the one thing I'm missing is a bit of yellowness on the ground, that's the one thing that I'm missing here, um, uh, Phyllis, yes, lately, I have the urge to get outside and paint, of course, the weather here in Spain is lovely at the moment, yeah, so stay tuned. I'm going to let you know about the giveaway in just a second, okay? And thank you, Donna. Don't forget to uh, to like the video. That I really appreciate it. That helps it a lot. Uh, Jose Luis Delgado Otero. Hey, greetings from Peru. Thank you for being here. David Harrison, are you planning a critique session anytime soon? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, could be next week. Oh, yeah, actually, let's do that. Let me check the schedule for a second because I think I already decided on that. Um... Yeah, no, it's supposed to be a bit different next week. But he, so here, I'll, I'll just tell you this. Feel free to send me your paintings for critique. I have a bunch of them and I will add any new ones you send me. Just um, if you can send me both the reference and the painting, I'll try and do that either next week or the live stream after that. Okay, there will be one soon. Um, uh, hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Hey, Paul. Uh, Hay is essentially just dried uh, grass. That's funny. Uh, yep, I guess that's what it is. Uh, Barbara, I love the foreground color. Thank you so much. Um, shouldn't the farther, farther away trees be blue or green as yellow? Yep, generally, yes. Uh, the difference here is small. It uh, wasn't important enough for me to exaggerate it more, I feel like. Uh, what was more important to me is the right side be gray. So here's the black and white comparison. Pretty close, right? You can see some small inaccuracies. Some parts need to be a little darker. Some parts could be a little lighter. But overall, that's, I think, pretty much as spot on as, as I'm interested in. Now, of course, this is a small painting. So when you paint small, there's less room for all of the details. Well, of course, if I paint a larger version of this, which I probably will because I really like this view, um, I'll get some more of the nuances in for sure. Um, Hey, Lollipop Strawberry, how are you? CB, have you ever tried painting using traditional color for objects? Example, purple tree versus... Um, it's interesting. Here and there. Not too much, though. But it's it's a fun thing to try for sure. Uh, James L. Baker, hey, Laron, greetings from London. I missed the change in time, so I'm late. Sorry about that. Yeah, we'll watch the recording on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, big, big Leo. Hi, genius. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Uh, Bargav. Uh... Hello, greetings from India. Is learning sketching first really necessary if one wants to learn painting? No, you can trace. You can just trace. Um, use a grid. If you just want to paint, no problem with skipping drawing as a skill, I think. Uh, Diane, I appreciate all your videos and admire how you offer so much free content. Thank you so much. I love your urban sketching book. Yeah, that's that's the one I put so much effort into. I sketched so much. Uh, Pierre, would putting a very light yellow glaze have been a disaster? Uh, over this, I think it would probably be too much. It's too late for that. Before I put that last glaze, yes, would have been good, of course. Uh, I've called the hay bales jelly rolls for cows since I was little. Oh, that's funny, Kimberly. Yeah, so let's do it. Let's do the giveaway. So here's what I need for you to do. It's very simple. If you want to win this painting of mine, which is a nice painting, it's one of the smaller ones, and I will improve it before I send it to you, uh, for free, 100% free, uh, you don't need to pay for anything, nothing, no shipping, no nothing. 
All you have to do is this, okay? Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell button next to the subscribe, which I think should be there, right? Uh, because that's how you, or they removed it. I'm not even sure. Uh, but if you go to the channel, you should see it. They just make sure you get a notification via email or via the YouTube app whenever I go live. Okay, so I want you to do these two things. And then two more things I need of you. One, follow the Facebook page. So I have a Facebook page, actually really a fun place to, uh, to be in and a lot of interaction there. So all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. That's my Facebook page. Just hit the like and follow. Okay, that's all you need to do. And comment on this video, this live stream. I want you to comment on that. Let me know and I'll put a reminder in a comment. Just your favorite, uh, what, did, what did I want to do? Uh, yeah, I wanted you to comment your favorite subject. That's all you need to do. Let me repeat this slowly. Just make sure everyone get it. If you want to win this painting, give it completely free. You don't have to pay for anything. No shipping, no nothing. Okay, and I think it's a nice one. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell button, right? Do a like and follow on the Facebook page, which is the first link in the description of this live stream. And comment down below because that's how I do the raffle from the comments. Comment down below your favorite painting subject. All I need, if you do that, you'll, you're in the raffle and I'll do, um, I, there's this website that does an automatic thing, it selects from all the comments. This is why I need you to comment, okay? So make sure you comment, not to chat, but comment on the live streams video once it ends or now if you can, just leave a comment, let me know your favorite painting subject, that's how I choose a winner. So do that and hopefully you'll win. That's uh, me out, not on Facebook. Sorry, David. Uh, if you're not on Facebook, you know what? Let's... Mm, if you're not on Facebook, that's I'll give you a pass, David. I'll give you a pass. Leave a if you're not on if you're not on Facebook, just join join anyway. Uh, it's okay. Leave a comment. Let me know, and I'll I'll choose a winner. That's fine. Um, I just want to make sure that some people visit the the Facebook page because uh, it's a good way. I'm 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 devoting more and more time there, so I want you to be there. That's pretty much it. Uh, of course I am. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Let's go over some of the comments. I'll do a reminder for the giveaway at the end, so don't worry. Um, uh, James, use my dirty palette to mix some beautiful colors. Thank you for the tip. I'm happy. It, this works for many people. I'm really happy it does because uh, it just it seems so obvious to me from the time I got started with watercolor. I really enjoy these nuances. Uh, of course I am. Hey, Lauren, seems I'm a bit late. Clocks have gone back here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. Sorry about that. That's my bad. Uh, thank you, Phyllis. Uh, Donna, yes, James, me too. Um, da, 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 da. Rian, have you tried using masking fluid? Yeah, one of my more viewed videos is me using masking fluid. And it's fun. Um, but I still haven't gotten quite the hang of it, so I'm not doing that much. Hey, Tattoo Tank, how are you doing? Hey, Maggie. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Yep, I hopefully got the values down nice. Thank you, CB. Thank you, Lollipop. Sorry, can you paint Lakefall watercolor landscape? So something that has like a lake and a waterfall, I can try. I wrote down, uh, I, I opened it in a separate tab, I'll remember for later. Uh, Irina, thank you so much. Pam Lake, woohoo, my favorite subject is uh, landscapes and I do love today's, awesome, happy to hear. Uh, thank you, Plumpy. Uh, Louis' favorite subject is flowers, cool. So write it down in a comment once this live stream ends. Uh, uh, Bargav, my favorite subject, nature and water. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, not in the chat, in a comment. Just letting you know. Not on Facebook, just this video. You can comment on this video. Actually, I don't care. You can, no, you need to comment in one place. You need to comment on this video because that's how you choose, that's how I choose a random winner. Because I don't want to do a bunch of names and pull one out of a, of a hat. I just, there's a, a, an automatic thing that does that. So I need you to comment on this live stream as soon as it ends. Okay, sorry for the hassle, but that's how it's going to work. Um, yes, not chat looking up. Uh, we're waiting for the end of the stream. Yep, yep. Um, so Surreal portrait, light and shadow. Sadly, I won't use Facebook. I'm my favorite subject, human portrait. Yeah, just comment here. It's okay. If you're not using Facebook, that's okay. I'll forgive you. <laughs> that's fine. I uh, didn't know about the Facebook page, so I will like and follow. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Now I want to end the stream so you can leave the comment. Uh, Lisa Portrait's waiting for you to accept my friendship on Facebook. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, I have, I have like 1,000 
message workers, not even like from people who know me from YouTube, just locally. So it's easy for me to mix. So I will apologize. Uh, Bill, how is your Facebook page listed? It's just the first link in the description of this live stream. First one. Uh, yeah, the comments won't be accessible. I'll find a better way to do it, honestly, um, because you can only leave a comment once the live stream ends. So sorry about that. Uh, hey, Jill, how are you doing? Sorry that I started early today, so some people might have missed it, uh, though you probably shouldn't have. So you probably just joined late. Cubs win. I have not yet tried out the Magello Mission Gold. Um, I do want to, but I haven't. Yet. Jackie, I may catch you live next week as well. Got sick from plan air, hunting, fog, and mists. Fall is awesome but tricky. Uh, did you have a chance to go for some outdoor painting in your new place? Not yet. Not yet. I really want to, but not yet. Um, Pierre, uh, okay, that's comments. Okay, good. So I think we're good. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Tattoo Tank, when your next video where we send you art. Yeah, so um, critiques video hopefully either next week or the week after feel free to send them and i'll just add them okay uh envy hey Leron, no drumming lesson today so i'm able to oh that's so cool drumming sounds so fun uh so yeah thank you for being here we're gonna wrap it up soon but thank you so much um i do want to thank each and every one of the people here that's amazing like 89 people and 86 likes at the moment so thank you so so much for that um i will do again once again reminder a giveaway once this live stream and simply comment your favorite painting subject, uh, follow the Facebook page, leave a like, make sure you're subscribed here, and you'll uh, get a chance to win this painting completely for free. Um, subjects, uh, Bill, favorite subject is the use of light on subject matter uh, in still life. Yep, still life is great, great fun. Uh, is your Facebook your... <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah, my pleasure, Phyllis. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, big, big Leo. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, thank you. Thank you all so, so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I will see you on Saturday's video. Tune in because Saturday's video is going to be super fun. So I'm going to hit the end stream, refresh the page, leave a comment, let me know your favorite painting subject. I will raffle one random winner to win uh, this painting. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to win it. I really want you to have it. Thank you so much. We'll talk again real, real soon. Until then, take care. Mm-hmm.